Good evening, good evening, good evening to each and every one of you. I thank God for another opportunity for us to gather together to study his word tonight. I pray that your day has been a blessed one and that as we begin to and delve into the word of God that you will be blessed uh, on tonight. Uh, let us, I don't have any announcements and I don't know of anyone per se that uh, we have that uh, may be in the hospital. If so, I have not uh, received any announcements. So that is a blessing if uh, we don't have anyone that is uh, sick. But let us continue to pray for those that uh, are, you know, all of our sick and shut in. Um, not only of our church, but uh, all over this land and country and other uh, states, uh, even uh, other churches. Let us uh, remember them in our prayers. And let us not forget the bereaved families, uh, those that have lost loved ones. We lift them up uh, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and ask him to comfort them as only his Holy Spirit can. So tonight, uh, before we get started, uh, let us let us pray. Father, we just thank you for yet another day, Lord God. We thank you that you have gone with us throughout this day, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're the one that woke us up this morning, Lord. We realize that it wasn't our doorbell, it wasn't our alarm clocks, but Father, we thank you that you are the one, Lord God, that touched us and enabled, enabled our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. And Father, we say thank you, Lord. And then somebody got up this morning, Lord God, but right now, Lord God, they've all, they've gone on, Lord God, to the world that's even unknown. We talk about it, but Father, we don't know what it is to die, Lord God, but Father, we know that somebody left this earth this morning, even after they got up, Lord God, so they... I have not been able to see six o'clock on Wednesday this afternoon. But Father, for some reason, you allowed us, Lord God, to continue to be here. And Father, we want to make, make the best of this, Lord God. We want to correct some things that we have done wrong, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, that you will be pleased with our walk and our talk, Lord God. And Father, as we begin to study your word, Lord God, we pray that, Lord God, that you will give us revelation knowledge of your word, Lord God. We pray right now, Lord God, that you will breathe on us, Lord God, and uh, with your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Father, we just thank you. We pray for those, Lord God, that may be listening right now, those that will maybe listen later on, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that there will be a blessing in it for them as well. Then, Father God, we pray that you will bless our pastor, Lord God, as only you can. Continue to heal his body, Lord God. Not only our pastor, but pastors all over this land and country. Father, we pray that you will be one uh, in their midst, Lord God. Continue to Give them what they need, Lord God, to feed the uh, the uh, sheep of, of your sheep, Lord God. We just thank you for your word right now, Lord God. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. It is a light unto our path, Lord God. We will hide your word in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Father, we ask now that you will forgive us of our sins and our transgressions because we know, Lord God, that we have done something this morning wrong just this uh, day alone, Lord. We've said some things, we've done some things, or either we've thought some things. So now we ask that you will forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we uh, began last, I think that was last week we began, we were go, uh, starting our study in the book of Ephesians, in the book of Ephesians. So we did establish the fact of the writer uh, last uh, week when we looked at um, uh, this letter. This is a letter we established that Paul is the writer of this letter. We established the fact that uh, Paul uh, was in jail when he wrote this. He was on house arrest. So uh, we we know that, and we know that it was Paul. We didn't have to speculate about it because Paul started out by saying who he was. He told us who he was, and he also told us that uh, he wasn't who he was by his own will or something that he wanted to do, but he was uh, an apostle by the will of God. So uh, this entire book of Ephesians, which I think it is always a good book uh, for uh, an, uh, someone that is just coming into 
to know Christ. It is and then those of us, sometimes we forget along the way. And so we need to go back sometimes and freshen up on it and look at it. Uh, so if you begin to look at this book of Ephesians, if you are, uh, it's only six chapters, the first three chapters, it uh, lets us know who we are in Christ. As I stated last uh, week, you know, so many of us, we're living as spiritual paupers when we are rich in Christ. But if we don't know what our inheritance is, we don't know how to tap into it. And so uh, 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 what we're going to, I, I'm trying to, my, um, my mouth can't go as fast as my thoughts are going. But uh, what I was about to say is that there are six chapters in those first three chapters we see where uh, we are getting to know who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ. And then, uh, in other words, we see what our position is in Christ. What is my position in Christ? Who am I in Christ? We will find that out in, the, in these uh, first three chapters in the book of uh, Ephesians. And then chapters four through six uh, tells us, okay, now that I know who I am. I should be living a life that reflects who I am. And another thing that I also, uh, I, you know, tell a lot of people when they say, well, you know, suggest, uh, ask them for a suggestion or something that they can read. And I say, go to the book of Ephesians. And as you begin to uh, look in this and, and begin to read this book, uh, or this letter that Paul wrote, uh, just begin to highlight all through the uh this entire uh, uh I keep saying book but we do know it's a letter but I call it a book because it's you know it's in the bible so it's part of the book but anyway as we began to go through uh Ephesians it began to read we are we see all through there you can just under underline it as we go in him in whom in Christ letting us know what we have and who who it is it's in him it's in Christ and it's in whom. So just kind of look at it's, uh, uh, how many, you know, we probably won't get a chance to read all of these verses, but we're going to do the best that we can. So what we're going to do, first of all, we looked at uh, last week, we kind of started off at uh, chapter, I mean, not chapter, but verse one and two. And then uh, uh, and after, you know, Paul get, was given his brief, salutation he always does that in all of this uh you know the books or the letters that he has written he always you know gives some type of salutation so he gave us a brief salutation because he said grace be to you and peace from god our father and from the lord jesus christ in other words he's letting them know and establishing the fact it's not me i'm just telling you what God, you know, God is the one, is and, and God the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's the one who is telling, you know, he has given me this word, just like the mailman, bring the mail. And so that's what Paul is. He was just bringing the mail and he was giving us what God had given him. And so this is after his um, salutation, he immediately begins to go and to praising God for the blessing or the riches uh, that we have in Christ. It's sort of like a doxology. In other words, uh, it just uh, go into, go into praise. And this whole praise, it starts like in chapter and not chapter in verse four and goes all the way to verse 14, talking about our inheritance or our richness that we have in Christ. And tonight, uh, just looking at this, even going to uh, the just the 14th verse, uh, we're going to try to get all of that in because we can break that up into three uh, parts uh, that uh, Paul is talking about what we have in, uh, uh, in, in Christ. First of all, we, uh, uh, we're going to look at it where he talked about our blessings involving the Father. We can see that in verses 4 through 6. And then in verses 7 through 12, we see the blessings that we have involving the Son. And then in uh, verses 13 and 14, we have the blessings involving the Holy Spirit. 
So we can just, we can see all of that in just these uh, verses alone from verses four through 14. These spiritual possessions that we are talking about, uh, that Paul is uh, 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 mentioning. And so we are going to see what these blessings are uh, and uh, who they involve. First of all, uh, the blessings uh, in verses four and six, uh, it, it reads, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. So in those verses alone, we're going to see these are the blessings. Well, let me back up before I get go, go there. Uh, 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 in verse 3, Paul said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, be blessings mean nothing but to give praise to God. He was praising God. And he said, what, I mean, because what has he done? He said, praise or to bless God because of what? Who hath blessed us with all, not some, but all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now he didn't, now notice he didn't say that he can bless us, nor did he say that he will bless us. In other words, he didn't say that we will be blessed if we meet a certain criteria or uh, we have, have to uh, come up to a certain standard. He said that he has blessed us. Uh, I think it's in the, in the New King James. I'm reading out the King James right now. And it had, says, who hath, but blessed is past tense. And say so he said, who hath blessed us? He has already uh, blessed us. In other words, we don't have to uh, get God to bless us. And so when we're looking at it, that has, if you're reading at the uh, New King James, it has, has blessed us. We know has from uh, when we went to school and back during my time when I went, we called them auxiliary verbs. I, uh, 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 well, no, the, we used to say helping verbs, but they are auxiliary verbs. And these verbs are, uh, well, when we see that uh, helping bird or that auxiliary bird being used with a, a, a past, uh, a, a perfect tense rather, but this is like a past perfect tense. In other words, I'm you know I'm not an English major or anything like that, but I'm trying to get a, a point across. What I'm trying to tell you is that uh, he is using this. Uh, helping verb along with this other verb saying bless. In other words, it's being used with a perfect tense verb. Uh, we could say that it was a present perfect tense. Uh, and whenever a verb is used in the present perfect tense, what is, what is that saying to us? In other words, they are being used to describe situations or events that began in the past. And then they have continued until the present. Oh, what am I saying? In other words, the blood still works. Did not Christ die in the past? He, he hung on an old rugged cross and he died. That's past tense. He died. But, and he shed his blood. That was past tense. He's not shedding his blood today. He's already shed the blood. That is past tense. But as that psalm says, that the blood still works. In other words, what he did in the past is still good in the present. And so this is what Paul was talking about when he said, uh, 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 he hath blessed us, hath blessed us. With all spiritual blessings. See, so many times we're looking for it in the natural. But he said that he has blessed us with spiritual blessings. They are in the spirit, uh, spirit first and then natural. We have to bring it out of the spirit into the natural. He has already best blessed us. We may seem like, or uh, either we feel like, I'm not blessed. I 
I'm not blessed. You know, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. But God has already blessed you to come out. In other words, I know sometimes, you know, we'll, uh, we don't, uh, you know, and I say it again, we don't have to get God to bless us because he already has blessed us. We are blessed just to, uh, you know, uh, in other words, what we have to do is we have to believe it. It's not enough to just say it. We got to believe that we are blessed. You know, and so many times we have a hard time believing it. Why are we having a hard time believing it? It's because we are tuned in uh, to the wrong network. Uh, what am I saying tuned in to the wrong network? You see, uh, if we don't believe it, then that means we are tuned into uh, the 10 spies network. But we don't need, we need to be tuned in to the two spies network rather than the 10 spies. What am I saying? You remember when Joshua sent those 12 spies over into the uh, land of, uh, came to, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, spy out? You know, 10 of them came back with a bad report, but then two came with a good report. And so that's what I'm saying is that if we are, we can't believe it, then that means that we're tuning in with those 10 that came back with the bad report because Paul is telling us that he has already blessed us with all spiritual blessings, everything that we need in the spirit to help us walk, to help us live according to the way that he has ordained for us to walk. Uh, it's all, it's, it's there. We just have to believe it, that it is there. And so, uh, so that takes us, uh, he's blessed us in heavenly places. See that word in Christ. And so we are going to, we're looking at now the blessings involving the father. Uh, what is the very first thing, uh, where he said that according as he has chosen us. In other words, we were chosen by God. We're gonna. We are looking at the blessings that involve the Father, Father God, uh, and and when we look at this word. So, in other words, God chose us, and when we look at this word uh, chosen, uh, it comes from a Greek word, eklegomi, eklegomi. In other words, it means to pick out. In other words, it's an election, uh, and so. When did he choose us? He chose us. It's right there in that same scripture. He chose us when? Before the foundation of the world. And I know some of you say, how could he choose me before the foundation of the world? Well, it tells us that, you know, he slew Christ was, uh, you know, had already uh, been slain before the foundation of the world. So in other words, if we go back through uh, and, and look at Psalms 139, it tells us that God knows our thought afar off. Even before I think it, and he knows where we are at all times. So anybody that knows what we are going to think, even before the thought even enter into my mind. And so in other words, we are talking about uh, foreknowledge. And that's what God has, foreknowledge. He already knew who was going to accept him and who wasn't. You know, I know sometimes people look at it and they say, well, foreknowledge, that means he had already, he chose them. So why did he choose them and then choose me? But see, God is no respecter of person. So he always does things right. He's always fair. So in other words, it's not that you didn't have a choice in it. You had a choice. But as I stated before, God already knew. He foreknew who was going to accept him, who was going to reject him. So if he foreknew, that's how he chose us, those that are uh, accepting him. So if he already knew that we were going to accept him, uh, so that's called the foreknowledge. And he chose us. He chose us because he already knew that we were going to accept him. Just let that resonate in your spirit. I'm sure you'll, you'll get it. You'll get it in a moment. And as I said, it was before the world was ever created that God made his choice or his election. 
It's sort of like, you know, we can't go and do anything like that. I can remember when uh, growing up and, uh, and, and when we got ready to play uh, softball or something, you know, and we had to go and choose who we want on our team. Yes, God has chosen us to be on his team, but he did it fairly because what? He already knew who was going to accept him. Uh, uh, and is, and uh, just as uh, First Peter 1 and 20 said, just as with Christ himself, who was foreordained before the foundation of the world. That's why I stated a while ago, he's Christ, he'd already been slain even before he was born. I know sometimes that does not make sense. But look at it when he said that. Um, and how did he, he, he chose us? What we said that the time that he chose us was before the foundation of the world. And then, uh, and not only that, but he said that he chose us that we should be what? Holy. And without blame before him. In other words, he even, he chose us. And then there is a, 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 a condition that he chose us and we've got to be, be what? He want us to be holy. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. So if we are going to pattern ourselves after him, we got to be holy. You know, and I know in, uh, sometimes in, uh, in the Baptist church, we don't like that word holy. But in, the, in word, other words, if we holy, that means that we've been set apart. We special. We walking after the things of God and we ought to want to walk in the things of God. And so here we see these are the things here that the father has done, that he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And Christ is love or God is love. And so if he is love, and if we are going to walk uh, like he walked, and if we are going to be holy, in other words, we've been set apart. Uh, and so that means that we are, they're not saying that we are not going to do something, you know, we will mess up. But just like David, when David messed up, what did he do? He was quick to come back to God, to repent. And see, too many of us, we, we want to, uh, when we get out, uh, uh, when we do things and, and do, then we, you know, we just want to continue to walk in, in unforgiveness. And, and we can't do that when we are, 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 are walking. I mean, because when we are walking in love, we can't walk in unforgiveness. We've got to love and we've got to love those that may not even love us. But if we, we, if we're not dependent on how they uh, treat us, but our love walk is based on Christ Jesus and what he did for us. As I stated before, the blood still works. So if we got the blood working on the inside of us and we are walking blameless and we are walking in love, then we will love those that don't love us. So we, we, we let us keep on here. And then he said, not only are we to be holy and without blame before him in love, but look at what he said, that uh, we haven't predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, to the, uh, I'm sorry, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. He adopted us. Jesus Christ adopted us into the family of God. And so we were his, we were his, his, uh, we were the object of God's love. Uh, we were the object of his choice. That's what he chose us. He didn't have to choose us. He could have chose someone else, but, uh, it was, uh, we, we were the ones that he knew that would accept him. And so he chose us in knowing, uh, and, and, uh, that we would, accept him. And so the, uh, we can't say that he, he was not fair, but Paul say he chose us in him. And so we got to understand that this election was by God himself 
you know, and it was even before we were born, even before we entered into our mother's womb. In other words, he knew that we were going to be part of the church. He knew that we were going to be part of the body of Christ. He already knew that because uh, he, it was predestined that uh, we were to be saved, that we would uh, accept his uh, calling to salvation because salvation has been extended to everyone but everyone will not accept it and he knew the ones that would accept it so what was uh, uh the purpose of his choosing us and that's where he called he he told us that he he chose us so that he wanted and uh, uh that we should be holy and without blame before him in love see the goal of god's choice was to produce a people in Christ Jesus, who would be holy. In other words, set apart for a special purpose. And then without blame. In other words, free from condemnation. And the only way that we can be free from condemnation is because we are in Christ Jesus. Then we got to do it in love. Walking before God in love. Walking before God in love, as I just stated before, because if God is love and we are patting ourselves after him, and we're going to see that later in the other uh, chapters four through six, as I stated earlier, uh, uh, chapters one and three tells us what we have, the blessings that we have in Christ. Uh, in other words, the position or the possessions that we have in Christ or who we are in Christ. But he's going to come on later and say, okay, now that I know who I am, then that dictates that I've got to walk a different way. I can't walk the same way that I used to walk because you know what? My walk ought to change and my talk should change because we are blessed to be God's chosen ones. And then not only that, not only did he choose us, but we've been what? Predestined by God. And that Greek word, uh, proodizo, meaning to predetermine. Uh, in other words, he decided beforehand. We were predestined. We have been predestined. He have been predestined us unto the adoption. He had already chosen us. He had already predetermined. In other words, he had already determined beforehand uh, who it was that was going to be chosen. Uh, so he said he predestined us. Paul was including himself in that. He said he predestined us. It's as with, it, uh, 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 you know, just as, you know, he elected us, he chose us, he predestined us, he pulled us out. And what was the purpose of God's predestination? Because he adopted us as sons. We have been adopted. God has foreordained that we, the church of Jesus Christ, should be adopted as his children. And that go, and that's something because you know what when a child is adopted into a family, that child that is adopted has all the same rights and privileges as a child that was born into the family. So I'm glad, you know, because at first when you know the, it was only it was extended to the Jews, but uh, Peter went to the Gentiles with it. And then Paul came along uh, preaching to the, uh, you know, to the Gentiles. And I am so glad that uh, we were, it was extended to us for us to be saved. Uh, because what? He had already predestined it. He already knew that the Jews were going to, uh, uh, that they were going to reject him. And so he said, well, if they are uh, there because they're rejecting me, Okay, so I've got somebody else that wants to be part of it. And so I will extend it to them. And then what was the basis of his predestination? It was according to the pleasure of his will. Simply put, in other words, it just pleased God. That was what pleased God. Uh, uh, it, it is something that he wanted to do. 
And it was by his divine will that he made it possible. He didn't have to do it, but he did it because he wanted to do it and because of his love. Then look at the B section of, of, of when we go on down to talking about in six to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted. So that when we've been what, accepted by God, and it comes from the Greek word karaluto, and it means to be highly favored, to pursue with grace and to uh, to have favor. In other words, to honor with blessing. He has honored us by what? By blessing us. Nothing that we did, it's nothing that we could do to uh, cause God to or uh, uh, want to save us. We didn't do anything. It was all because of what Jesus did. And it was his good pleasure. He just wanted to. God wanted a family. In other words. The basis upon which we are. The, uh, you know. The defining or the determining factor was. We are uh, accepted. He accepted us. We were accepted by God. And then the, uh, the, the basis upon which we are accepted as what? In the beloved. In Jesus Christ. That he accepted us what? In him. And it was emphasized uh, throughout these that these blessings are in and by Christ. That's the only reason why that, you know, we have access to them. Because of what Jesus Christ did. And that has, uh, uh, so everything that he has done, it was because of, of Jesus Christ. It was, you know, as I say, when you go through here, it's all, and you're going to see in him, in whom, in Christ, or in Christ Jesus. God predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ. Then he, God has accepted us in the beloved, and that in the beloved, that's Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is our being in Christ that we are what? Privileged to be highly favored by God. That's why, you know, we always say that I'm blessed and highly favored. But we never stop to think about why is it that I'm blessed and highly favored. It has nothing to do with material blessings. And when we think about the things of God so many times, when we say that we are blessed, we are talking about material things. But God is not saying, Paul just said up in verse 3, he said that the Father had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So if we want those uh, spiritual blessings, where do we have to go to get them? We got to go into the heavenly places. We got to go into the heavenly places to get them. As I said, uh, you know, it's in the spirit, then it has to be brought uh, from the uh, spirit down into the natural. So we see that um, that is the blessings involving the father. That was in verses four through six the blessings involved in uh in seven through twelve we have the blessings involving the son god has redeemed us look at that in in verse seven in whom we have redemption through his blood we were redeemed through whom and in, in, through christ it said in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace whose grace christ grace. So in other words, these are the blessings now that involve the son. God has redeemed us, but he redeemed us in and through, uh, he redeemed us in Christ through the blood of Christ. And then if we go on down and look in that B section on into the eight uh, verse, we'll see that he has forgiven us of our sin, forgiven us according to the riches of his grace, which God has made to abound toward us. He said, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. In other words, we have redemption. We have been redeemed. We redeemed. That was what? The blessings involving the son because he's the one that gave his life for us. He uh, And then God has forgiven us 
of our sins, forgiven us according to the riches of his grace, which God has made abound toward us, abounding in all wisdom and prudence. And then God has revealed his will to us. How did he reveal his will? He revealed the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. In other words, he revealed how he would gather together in one all things in Christ. Things where? Things in heaven, things on earth. God has given us an inheritance. We see that in verses 11 and 12. An inheritance, what? Predestined by God according to his purpose, who works all things according to his will. We have an inheritance for those who first trusted in Christ so that uh, they can be to the praise of God's glory. Then we have blessings involving the Holy Spirit. And that's in verses 13 and 14. The Holy Spirit is our seal. Look at me. It said, in whom ye also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that, ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And when you seal something, that means that it cannot be opened until it gets in the presence of the one who it belongs to. And then that it's, it says that uh, 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 us being sealed is our promise. It's just like, and I like to say that it was, uh, you know, he promised us uh, uh, he, he, that he was, you know, if we trust in Christ and if we hear the word uh, 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 and, and continue to live according to his word. In other words, this seal that he has given us of the Holy Spirit is our guarantee. It's our guarantee. It's a guarantee of what? Of our inheritance, of what we have in Christ. It's a guarantee until the redemption of the purchased possession. It is just like, remember uh, a long time ago when we used to have a uh, layaway and we would go and we would put a down payment on it. In other words, what we were saying is that I'm going to put this down. Uh, so this is my seal that I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish paying it. And when I finish paying it, then you will give me my merchandise. So that is what God is saying uh, 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 about what Christ did. Uh, uh, and so he said that he has given us the Holy Spirit as our, our inheritance or it, in other words, it's our seal. It's our guarantee that there is something coming later. This is not all there is to it. There is something better than what we've got here now. He's got something better for us. So I've, you know, given you the Holy Spirit. And so we can, and when we walk in the Spirit and we uh, uh, live in the Spirit, and then he said, I got something even better than that. Oh my God. Oh my God. We got something to look forward to. And that's what he's saying that he has given us as a seal. Uh, so that uh, as a promise, because whatever he has promised to us, God will provide. And God is no is not a man that he should lie. And if he told us that he was going to give us uh, the purchase possession of glory, then it will happen. When else, but he's got to, you know, we got to live here first. And we got to live like we've got that seal on us. You know, so many times we live in, and so uh, uh, you put us in a bunch and you can't tell the believers uh, from the non-believers because we are doing the same thing. We are talking like they are talking. We are acting like they are acting. And, uh, and we can't do that. There ought to be a difference when we walk in a room our uh, presence ought to shift the atmosphere when we walk in because just our presence and what we possess on the inside, what he has given us when we walk in a, in a room, it ought to change the atmosphere. In other words, everybody, you know, in a sense, will look around and say it's something different about her or something different about him. Yes, it is. 
because I got the Holy Ghost on the inside of me. And that is my guarantee that I've got something even better coming on later on in Christ. Amen. I know that we have kind of went over, but uh, we will not try to go so fast. In other words, if it take me a month to get through with this, and then I will, I will just do it. I'm going to have to slow it down because my mind going faster than my mouth can. So again, I pray that something has been said here tonight that has uh, touched you and will cause you to want to go and dig into this book of Ephesians. So continue to read on in it. See who you are in Christ. See what you have in Christ. You know, we're not, we're walking around thinking that we don't have anything. We are somebody. We are rich in spiritual blessings because he's blessed up with all of this. Not some of them. We got all, we got access to them all. But as I said before, we're walking around like spiritual paupers. So let us dig into the word of God and see what we have in his word. Once we see what we have, then let us uh, uh, walk in it and let us live according to the way that he wants us to live. I uh, look forward to seeing you Galileans on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And I pray that each one of you will have a glorious uh, afternoon and uh, have a, a pleasant night on tonight. And that on Sunday morning that you will find yourself in a church somewhere. But until then, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. I pray that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. I pray that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace in the name of Yeshua. Go and go in peace. And I love you.